Well, good evening. We're going to get started shortly, so we can go ahead and get in and get a seat. Good evening, good evening. I'm not sure if anybody else is still out in the hallways, but it's want to get everybody in. I try to get started on time, so get you out of here uh, without staying too long tonight. All right, a few more people still trickling in as I look out in the hallway. All right. Well, welcome to Latham Bible Baptist Church's educational ministry here of Latham Christian Academy. We are so glad that God has led you to be a part of everything this year. I know I have met almost everybody in here, but just in case there's somebody I haven't, my name is Brian Fry. Uh, I am the school administrator here uh, at Latham Christian Academy with a variety of different uh, jobs and functions that I do around the building, but basically try to make sure every, everybody else can do their job effectively. I think that's probably the number one job that I do. Uh, but we are so glad that, uh, that you are able to be with us tonight, that God has led you to Latham Christian Academy for this year. Uh, before we begin, I've asked if our pastor of our church here, Pastor Dean Walter, if he would come and open us in prayer this evening. So Pastor Walter, if you would come. Many years ago, when I was in seminary, I had a class entitled The Philosophy of Christian Education. And when I took that class, I had to write eight different term papers for just the one class. It was a challenge. But uh, part of the philosophy of Christian education is this. Christian education must be centered around the person of Jesus Christ. Um, the Word of God says that in all things he should have the preeminence. And so our goal is to uh, give Jesus Christ preeminence in all that we do here. And we're going to pr pray and ask God to make that so this coming year. Let's pray. Father, it is our desire to have a Christ-centered educational system. And we're thankful that uh, we have the Word of God that directs us to the person of Christ and directs us to... Uh, his workings for us and his perfectness and his perfection and I pray that you will cause us to again uh, center our thoughts around Christ this year may he be preeminent in, in all that we do and say thank you for these parents for these students for this staff father we pray that we might have just an excellent year of growth of learning of learning truth Thank you again for this evening. We pray your blessing upon it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, thank you very much, Pastor. Um, we appreciate a lot has happened around here over the summer, as always. Uh, those of you who have been here for many years, I hope you notice at least a few differences around. And as you continue to go around, you may notice even more. We've had uh, several classrooms painted, uh, lots of volunteers, especially Mrs. Coonrod has been involved in painting several of them. We appreciate her and all of her work and several others contributed. We've had uh, some work done on the roof. You might have noticed as you came in, we have a new roof on another part of our building. Um, we thank, I, I could even begin, but Mr. Mansfield and so many of his crew that worked um, on that um, over the summer. Lots and lots of other improvements around the building. Uh, we appreciate that. in. Uh, within this room, uh, the, many of the men in our church have been involved in lots of little projects around here, and more are coming. So we're really excited about that. Um, let me go ahead and just introduce you to some of our faculty and staff as we begin, some of the faces that you'll see. Um, and I encourage you, one thing that we're kind of, I don't want to use the word advertising, is probably the wrong word, but thanking God for his grace in, is as you go and look at um, the teachers' little name badges beside their classrooms this year, we put on there the number of years of teaching experience that they have. God has blessed us with a very experienced faculty and staff here. These are men and women, mostly women, um, who love the Lord dearly, um, who have given their lives for young people. And we're so blessed to have them as part of our ministry. So even though this, the people I'm going to introduce may not be your child's teacher, in many cases they're going to interact with your child, they're going to be a part of your child's experience in the coming year. 
Um, now, we introduced our K3 and K4 teachers the other night. And I don't know if I have very many K3 and K4 families with us uh, tonight. Um, but So let me jump into some of the, um, go beyond that a little bit for now and start with Mrs. Mean. Mrs. Mean, if you'd stand. There you go. Mrs. Mean is our assistant administrator and one of our K5 teachers. And God has blessed us richly. Almost all of you have met her. It's almost impossible to be a part of the school and not meet Mrs. Mean before your first day of school. So we, we appreciate Mrs. Bean, and she is such a blessing to us. Uh, rejoining our staff this year and sitting beside her, Mrs. Ruth Hamilton, if you would stand, Mrs. Hamilton. Uh, she will be uh, teaching in K-5 as well this year. She's back with us after a year hiatus at another Christian school. Uh, we're so glad to have her as part of our ministry again. Did you all do this on purpose? You're kind of sitting in order there. Uh, Mrs. Laura Coonrod, Mrs. Coonrod, if you would stand, Mrs. Coonrod is our first grade teacher this year. And again, thank you so much. We're excited to have her as part of this. Then Mrs. Kelly Parker. Mrs. Parker will be teaching a second and third grade combined class this year. And again, we're so glad to have her a part of it. Then next is Mrs. Bahan. There she is in front, Mrs. Bahan. Now we talk about experience. This, yes, uh, this is, we, we celebrate this. This is at least, there's some dispute on the exact number. This is at least her 40th year at teaching. It may be, what'd you say, Mrs. Bean, 45? It's somewhere between 40 and 45, number of years of teaching. Uh, so fourth grader, and I, I'm one of the fourth grade parents this year, I am so excited that my son is gonna have the uh, privilege of being in Mrs. Bahad's class. You're, you're not gonna come across very often a teacher with 39 at least years of teaching experience for your student. And God, it is such a blessing that God has given us uh, with that. So we appreciate her. Um, then teaching fifth and sixth grade, Mrs. Lori Diggs, Mrs. Diggs, so uh, again, continues here, and we appreciate her ministry. Uh, again, look at the name tags. I had to correct hers to get hers right, but it's there. Do you notice it's correct now? <laughs> I got it on there. Um, then we have, moving into our secondary, Mrs. Pat Hamilton. Mrs. Hamilton, if she would stand, she is our distance learning specialist and also works with secondary math. So we're, we're so glad to have her continuing. And she is one, how many of your children graduated from our school? Well, I know all of them, but how many is that? Six children graduated from Latham Christian Academy of hers. So we appreciate, she's a real blessing here. Then we have Mrs. Annie Coupeyan, Mrs. Coupeyan, there she is. I, she teaches a lot of different things, but basically PE, music, and some secondary classes. So Mrs. Coupeyan, thank you. We're glad to have her a part of it here. Then we have Mrs. Sue Walter. This is our pastor's wife. Mrs. Walter teaches science and some secondary math as well. Again, so glad to have her a part of our ministry. Then Mrs. Bethany O'Rourke. Where is she? Oh, there she is, right there. Mrs. O'Rourke uh, joining us again. Um, this is the first time I've introduced her that way at the start of the year. Some of you may know her as Miss Woods. Uh, we've been instructed that that name is no longer acceptable. So we're gonna make sure we call her by the proper name this year, Mrs. O'Rourke. Uh, she teaches high school English and also some other junior high classes that she helps us out with. And then you met earlier Pastor Walter, who teaches our uh, senior high boys Bible. Ed is a real blessing, Pastor Walter. They, again, very glad to have him a part of it. Some of our staff, let me introduce, I, I think they're all here. I, I looked earlier. If, if I say somebody's name, it means they were here and then they left. Uh, but Mrs. Patty Kettlewood, you all know Mrs. Kettlewood, I think, if you would stand up, though. If you owe us money, go see her tonight. Um, <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Kettlewood. Uh, she is your greeter. She is the face of our school. She's the one you see at the office every day. Uh, and again, what a blessing she has been to me over the last four years and just a help there in the office. So we appreciate Mrs. Kettlewood. Um, then, let's see, I saw Mrs. Deb Rourke. Is Mrs. Rourke? Oh, right up here. She's too close to me. Mrs. Rourke, again, a lot of different things she does, but involved in extended sessions. She'll do some PE classes as well this year, and we could keep the list going, but we'll stop there. We appreciate Mrs. Rourke, uh, who's part of it. And then my wife, Mrs. D. Fry, will be working an extended session this year, so appreciate Mrs. Fry and glad to have her a part of our ministry. And then I think Mrs. Fischel is here. Where is Sarah Fischel? There she is, Mrs. Fischel. Uh, thank you very much. She works an extended session. You might have her there. She is the K3 aide. But for you all, you would deal with her more with extended session um, that you'll see her in the afternoons, perhaps. And then I think I just see one school board member here, I think, uh, tonight. If there's more and I'm missing somebody, I'm sorry. But we have Mrs. Elaine Henry uh, here as one of our school board members. Any other school board members that I'm missing here? 
Okay. I uh, appreciate Mrs. Henry, who is just uh, joining our board this year. Um, our school board, just so all of you know, um, is comprised from members of our church. They're selected and voted on by our church, and they um, have a, a lot of very important functions in um, advising and assisting in school functions. So we appreciate them and uh, thank uh, Mrs. Henry for being here this evening. All right, let me just go through a few general things and we'll get you to the classrooms, which is really what you're interested in. Let me talk about a couple of things about scheduling. It will be a tremendous help to your classroom teacher and to the school in general if whenever possible, uh, doctors and dentist appointments are scheduled at the, at the end of the day. Um, it just creates more disruption if then they come in late or if they come in and leave again, those kind of things. And that's really any grade level. It really is a big help to us. I know it's not always possible. We all know that and we'll work with you. But whenever possible and you have that option, uh, it is a help to us if you can schedule those. Um, please don't ask us on days that you have to pick them up early. Don't ask us to send them to the front door and wait for you. It's really not wise, even if they're 12th grade. Sometimes that may be less wise if they are 12th grade, actually. <laughs> but sorry, how many seniors do I have here? Uh, sorry about that. Um, but we, we, you have to come to the office during the day, sign them out and then we, you'll take them physically from us. We know that you're there with you. That's a huge help if you don't even ask us that. Even during extended session on a rainy day, we can't do it. We want to protect your children and make sure they end up with you. And so that's, that's an important part. Um, we do have, some of you may be aware of this, I sent an email out with some of these things. We do have a revised student handbook. If you want to pick up a printed copy, see Mrs. Kettlewood in the office, she'll get you one or I can get you one. Um, have some pictures on the front, some of your children on the front there. Uh, this is the revised, it, it's not a significant revision. You don't have to go through and worry about, are there all these changes? It's really not. There is a summary on our website under resource documents. If you want to read all the changes other than typos that we fixed, uh, they're on a, it's on there um, under go to resource documents and at the, near the top of that page, it will list the changes. Uh, but it is there and it is available. Um, I think many of you are aware I don't know whether to call it a clothes closet, uh, but something like that. We have uh, uniform clothes that are available for you to take. At the end of the year, many families will give us their uniforms that are still in reasonable condition, and they can at very least be a backup pair for your child uh, to have, and they're free. We want you to take them. Please don't take more than you can use. We want everybody to have a chance, but stop by our library. If you don't know where that is afterwards, we'll show you. But it's, the, it's just down from Mrs. Means' classroom. Go to Mrs. Means' room, look right, and you'll be in our library. Um, so if you have any questions, I'll see any of us afterwards, and we'll show you. See all the clothes laid out. If it can help you, please take it, and uh, we'd appreciate it. I, I should also mention, I don't think she's here tonight, um, but Mrs. Seal Donnelly. Mrs. Donnelly is our volunteer librarian. She also helps us out with the clothes closet. She's the one who labels all of them, folds them, washes them when necessary, and then repackages any you don't take uh, at the end of the year. We really appreciate Mrs. Donnelly's help with that. I know it's been a help to our family, and I think it has to many of your families as well. So please take some of those. Be aware next week, it seems like many of the area districts are starting on different days. Be aware that your home district may not provide bus transportation, even if they do other days. Please have your children here on time, regardless if there's buses available. We're starting Wednesday. It's a real, it really can mess things up. If the children, we teach a routine to everybody but one, and then that child doesn't come in until a day or two later because their home district didn't have school till Thursday or Friday. So we appreciate it if you can help us with that. Um, this year, one of the things Mrs. Rourick helps us out with is school banking. And uh, if you're not familiar with this program, I encourage you to see her at the end. She has some brochures she can give you that explain a lot more about this. This is a great way to teach your child to save money for the future. And you can bring in, she told me the other day, as little as a cent. As little as one penny a week you bring in. The children get a special gift the first time they bring money. And then remind me again, how often is it after that? Every fifth time after that. They get a special gift just for saving. And that comes from Capcom. So we appreciate their partnering with our school and other schools like ours in the area just to help teach that skill that too often is missing, isn't it? Um, speaking for my generation, I know we're not the best savers in the world, um, and as the surveys have shown. Um, we like to spend more than we like to save. So let's try to teach our children a little better, maybe, and get them, um, and get them saving even from a young age. And again, even if it's your money you're said to get, it's still an important skill that they see. Putting money in a bank and setting it aside is valuable. They are making some changes to the program this year. We'll try to get that more to you 
um, in print so you're aware of it. One, they've changed the report card program because not every school does four report cards a year. So basically what they're saying now is in June, at the end of the year, you'll need to actually stop by a Capcom and present your final report card, but they'll get, put $30 in your account for doing that. Just for going by Capcom and showing them. Now, I don't know about your family, $30 is a lot of money. Um, <laughs> I'll take that any day. So for just bringing by a report card, especially most of us probably live pretty close to a, one of their branches or another. Uh, so I encourage you, if you pick up the form, actually the registration is in that, right? The registration document. So you can just stop by Mrs. Rourke and get one of those and get registered, and then you can start sending money in. We're gonna start the program on September 16th, restart it. Um, though it'll be each Tuesday, Tuesday morning. Uh, sorry about that, I drew a blank for a minute. Each Tuesday morning, we'll be doing it. You can send money in with your child, and they'll take it a class at a time. Uh, we'll go down and present the money or she gives a receipt and everything so if you're sending a little morning want to make sure it got to her just have them bring the receipt back and uh, she'll get she'll give that to them there again any other questions about that uh, she's the best one to see I'll try to answer questions Mrs. Kettlewood and I maybe but it's better to see her uh, so if you, you could track her down we'll get you the right answers I don't, know if, I don't think I brought one of these up um, one change we're making this year and I think once I explain this it'll become very obvious why we're doing this um, we talked about our school board earlier, and um, we really are uh, concerned. We want to make sure that uh, your children are as totally safe as possible while here at school. So we are going to ask that all of our volunteers, anybody who's volunteering to supervise students, for example, to chaperone on a field trip, or especially to drive on a field trip, go through a background check. And a lot of schools start to do that. It's a shame that we need to today, but I think all of us will feel better knowing that those directly supervising our children um, have been through that check. So what this means though is if you are available to volunteer, we love that. We need those chaperones on field trips. But we're going to need to work a little ahead. It takes, especially if you live in Rensselaer County, it takes several weeks to get that back. Um, Rensselaer County is the only county in the Capital District that requires them to actually go to the courthouse and physically check your records. So it takes longer <laughs> and it costs more. Um, and I'm just going to let you know a ballpark of what it does cost. If you can help towards that, we appreciate it. I'm not going to require it. You're a volunteer. Uh, we will cover it. But if you can help defray that cost, in any, even if it's just paying like $20 towards it, we would appreciate that as well. Um, it, if you're going to drive and you live in Rensselaer County, it's $60 to do that background check, uh, to do a DMV plus the uh, full Rensselaer background check. Um, it's $11, it takes $11 for the, the uh, DMV check. So $11 less if you're just gonna chaperone, but not drive on a field trip. If you live in any of the other capital uh, district counties, um, it's $25. You live in uh, an Albany County or what, Saratoga County, is that the other one where Clifton Park is? Um, it's $25, then plus 11 again if we have to do the, the motor vehicle check, uh, if you're gonna drive students. And so again, we appreciate it and I'm not going to think any worse of you if you don't have that done, but you're, we're not going to be able to allow you to supervise students in any way, like be a chaperone or anything like that. Um, and this is for everyone's well-being. And I hope you understand we're not out to get anybody, we're not out to think negative about you, but we want you to feel comfortable with the ones supervising your children. A background check can't tell us everything, but it's sure going to catch some things. And uh, we want to do our best in that way. If you have any questions about that, please see me. Let me go through a couple things quickly here before, and then we're going to be uh, here in just about, hopefully about five minutes, unless there's questions, dismissing elementary families. Um, I love this chart. It's about as crazy. I, I could not have made this chart more complicated if I tried, could I? Um, this is a not-to-scale model of our parking, not even the right shape of our parking lot, but it fits on a PowerPoint slide. So that's why we work it. I want to remind everybody about the traffic pattern, especially if you are new. Uh, please pay attention to this. It really is important, parents, that when you come in, immediately after entering our parking lot, you make a hard left, and you're going to go all the way over to the grass over here on the side. Not, hopefully don't drive on the grass, but you're going that far, go all that way around, and then loop down. You know, basically, there's, there's a storage shed in our dumpster right here. That can use that as your guidepost if you want. But come in, come around. You know what the tempting thing is? There's a parking spot right here, and you want that spot, so I'll just loop in real quick. It's really not good. We're going to have even more cars this year. Our enrollment is about 10 students higher than it was last year. 
And some of our enrollment has also shifted to lower grades that don't provide busing, that you can't even get busing for. So it means there are going to be more cars in the parking lot. It really is important. Don't park, don't like loop, go a quick loop in and just cut in. I don't see anybody coming. Please don't. Take, go around, loop around, come back up and pull in there. It really will be a help. I will try to be out. I probably can't be on the first day of school. There's too much in here. But I try to put my nice yellow vest on and go stand out there and help um, people get to where they need to be uh, as early as I can next week. Students, we don't have this many. It, there's only a couple of students that are driving. Take a couple spots. But just park as much as you need to. Please don't park. I'll have ropes out, Lord willing. Please don't park in these spots. Let me explain. There's two reasons why we ask you not to park there. Um, and it's, it's, this includes, by the way, the handicap parking. Unless you are, we, we required to leave those spots open. We can't, we're not supposed to. I guess I could go out and block them. But we really are not supposed to block those. And we really want to be able to help those who legitimately do need to park close. But I told this story the other night, uh, Thursday night, when we had our K3 and K4 families in. Uh, during my second year here, a day of pouring down rain. I know, they were pouring down rain. And um, we had a mother who came in. And she came in a little later, maybe like, you know, 8.30, 8.45 or so, and parked in one of these handicap spots right up here. Because it was pouring down rain, right? Good excuse, right? Well, not because the reason we don't want people parking there is made worse by rain. And that is the visibility you don't have when you back up. And there, there, was, there was two children, there were two children coming behind them. And she backed up and came very close to hitting those children. And that would have been, and again, totally not following directions that were given. We encourage you, please, 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 don't do that. Um, come, don't park in these spots, no matter how much it's raining, no matter how much it may be cold or snowy or whatever, it's for everybody's safety. We just found that these spots are very difficult for you to back out of when students and other vehicles are coming behind you. Um, and so avoid those spots. We do put ropes and cones out to try to make it obvious, but every year I have people that pull under the rope. Anyway, I have to move it for every church service, so I don't want anything more permanent than rope, because you all see me. I'm the one out there moving those uh, before and afterwards. Realize buses are going to come in. They need to loop around. They make a difficult turn there for them. This is kind of a tight parking lot for the big buses when those big 64 passenger buses come in. Um, so just stay clear of them. Give them, obviously, the right of way. You know they're allowed to give tickets. I know some of you have learned that probably from personal experience. So. Stay away from the, be nice to the buses. Is Mr. Mean driving here this year? No, he's not. Some of you know that Mrs. Mean's husband is a driver for the North Colony District. And last year, he was one of the drivers that actually delivered students here. Um, at least in the afternoon he was, I remember seeing him. Uh, remember, we do have a five mile an hour speed limit. I know it's slow, but it's that way on purpose, okay? Please keep it slow in the parking lot, especially at, in the afternoons when they're in the nicer weather and there are students out. Uh, like at the playground or on, the, on this field over here, straight out front, there's often people in the field. Five miles an hour, you can stop pretty quickly. 15, someone runs in front of you, you're probably going to at least bump into them. So please keep it down to five during this school day. There's some ways you can help us get stuff without spending a dollar more than you are. Remember, there's some area things that have programs. Campbell's Labels has been around forever. Save the little, is it the uh, UPC seal on that now? It used to be the front label, but the UPC seal on that, bring it into the office. Bring it into your child's teacher. Do whatever. Get us those. We, can, we get every year a lot of, usually PE equipment, sometimes art equipment, things like that, we don't pay a dime for. Comes in through saving that. Um, price chopper tools for schools. Mrs. Kettlewood can help you get registered for that. All you need is their little card, right? The number on the, uh, if you have those price chopper cards. If you shop at price chopper anyway, Give us your card number. We get some of that. Target does a similar program. Uh, we appreciate Hannaford. I don't know how Hannaford's program works, but we'll find out. I know Hannaford has a program. Um, just designate us for those things, and there's a way without increasing tuition at all, we can get some better stuff here and really be a help to everyone. So, you know, if you like Campbell's soup, you got that tomato soup during the winter, oh, that's a great way on a cold day. I love to, I love, you know what? There's competitors, but nobody equals Campbell's tomato soup. <laughs> you know what? Store brand, I know my wife says, store brand, you can live with it, if you, but Campbell's tomato soup. There's the commercial. In the middle of winter, nothing beats that. Grilled cheese sandwich, maybe to do, okay. Yes, I've already had dinner. All right, uh, a couple of things. 
Uh, quickly about extended session. Um, the last thing I need elementary people for. Extended session, two reminders. Students must be picked up by 5.30. This is must, 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 must. Please don't use us as your emergency. It's say, well, I'll just leave them there. I don't have any other choice. Have another emergency plan. If you get caught in a huge traffic jam, you have to stay late at work. Have a friend or neighbor or another parent here. Let us know who that is, of course. Have a parent, though, or neighbor that can be your backup plan. Beyond 5.30, we do charge $1 a minute per child. Okay, so some of you have several children, that could really add up. Mrs. Rourke is, stay, is the 5.30 person this year. She needs to get home. She has family responsibilities. We're not gonna leave your child. Don't worry about that. But if it goes beyond 5.30, we do have to charge that. So again, don't ask us to waive it. Don't come in and say, but it was a huge traffic jam. Again, please have another emergency plan, not us, in case you get caught in that. All right, please understand how, how that really can change things on our end. When someone's here, until, when someone doesn't come until sometimes after 6 o'clock to pick somebody up. And that happens. So please remember that. Our school office closes, well, theoretically, I said on Tuesday night, about 345 or so, uh, Mrs. Kettlewood gets off, technically. How often do you leave by 345, Mrs. Kettlewood? Uh, not, not all that often. But you call the office. You need to get a message to the extended care worker. You don't get any answer because the office is closed. If you're going to use extended session in, that, in the afternoon, I encourage you to write this number down, put it in your phone. Um, our extended care workers will, Mrs. Rourke generally, or if, she, if someone else is in her place, will carry a school cell phone. That is the number for that cell phone. That cell phone will not be, it rang during the day today. I don't know if somebody who got the number Tuesday night was trying to call our school. Be sure to put that in like extended session in your phone, not just under LCA, because it, we won't answer it during the day. But in the afternoon, you need to get a message, you're running late, you, you, know, you told your daughter you were going to be there at 4 and now you're not going to be there till 5 and you don't want her to panic, that's fine, let us know. And we even encourage sending a text to that number, that way it'll be less distracting to Mrs. Rourke because as you know, we have, do have the policy, our teachers are not allowed to use cell phones. This phone is the exception, of course, it's an emergency phone though. It's just to let us know something unexpected has happened, you have to get a message to the extended care worker after 3.45. Um, and again, like I said, I'd encourage you, first of all, to text if that's more convenient for you. Um, that way she can just look down, read the message, and continue supervising the students. But if you need to, certainly you can call as well. So write that. we'll send that number home next week as well with those of you who use it. Uh, please, th those of you who are new, and I know there's not a lot of new faces in here, but those of you who are new this year, be prepared to show photo ID. It's not that we don't trust you, but we don't trust everybody else out there. And until we get to know you um, in extended session, um, when you pick your child up, we're going to ask you to show us ID. So please just be prepared. Don't be offended. Again, we want your child to be safe. So if everybody can be prepared for that, that'll be a big help to all of us. Um, and along that same lines, if you're going to have somebody other than you, anyone other than the parents who are going to pick the child up, we need to know about that. We're going to ask them for ID as well, but they also have to be on a list so that we already know. If something unusual comes up during the day, again, call Mrs. Kettlewood in the office. She'll let the extended, extended session people know, you know, my neighbor's coming today. I had to work late. My neighbor's coming to pick up my child. Give us the name. Again, we'll probably ask them for photo ID, but just be sure we know about it. We want your child to be safe. All right, when you're sent to your classroom, there's a couple of forms. I don't know that all the teachers have both of these forms ready to give out, but there are a couple of things that you're going to get. Um, if you are sixth grade or below, I have one here that says Laura Fry on it. Um, if you are sixth grade or below, you're going to have one of these cards. This is what is teacher information card. Some of them, like mine, have the wrong school year on it because I messed up printing them. Uh, but uh, if you pick these up and there are some things on it to go through, read through, just make sure we have the right information. Um, there's another form that looks like a big grid, this white form. This is one per family. Your teacher with the youngest child will have one of these. So if you have multiple children, the youngest family has this, the teacher of the youngest. In high school, Mrs. Walter has them, 7th through 12th grade, see Mrs. Walter. We do this every year. Stuff changes. It could have even changed since you fill out, filled out your re-enrollment application back last spring. We want to make sure we have the right email address, certainly the right phone numbers. There's a section on here at the top, though, that lists who can pick up your child from if you were here last year who you've given permission to. Anybody else, if you want to add them now, put them on here. If there's somebody you want to cross out, you don't want them to have permission to pick up your child anymore, cross them out. 
If even if there are no changes though, please sign the sheet and get it back so we don't send you another copy <laughs> next week or week after. Just sign it, give it back to your child's teacher or to the school office. We'll go through and make sure we have all these back and then we'll try to get those who aren't here tonight or others with that. Um, oh, and regardless what is checked at the top, it, there's a line up there that says, uh, please do not publish my family's. We don't publish any family's information without your permission. So don't worry if it's checked on there and said, oh, oh no, I have to change that. We don't share. So that, by, along that line, don't call Mrs. Kettlewood and ask, can I get a list of all the phone numbers of the kids in my class? No. We're, we, today, too many people are too concerned about privacy issues. If you want to send something to all the kids in your class, let's say there are 16 kids in the class, send in 16 cards, we'll make sure they get home if you send them to everybody. But we're not going to give you the addresses and phone numbers. Too many people now are too concerned about it. So you can ignore that section of this. By policy, we don't do it anyway. So regardless of what's marked there. But look through the rest of this uh, from your child's teacher. Now, so in the classroom, the teachers will have you complete these forms that can discuss other classroom issues with you. This is not the time for a long visit. If you have something you really need to talk to your teacher, child's teacher about, please set up an appointment with her. Don't try to pull her aside away from everybody else. Set up an appointment. We'll be happy to find a time within the next week to get with you. Um, but this is not the time for that. This is the time, quick hello, policy questions, what's going to happen in my classroom, those kind of things. So let me go ahead and dismiss sixth grade and below teachers, first of all, so they can get to their rooms before the kids do. Uh, sixth grade and below teachers, you can go ahead and go to your classrooms. Um, Mrs. Henry, would you do me a favor as the, our school board member here? Can, in case someone doesn't know what room to go to, can you kind of just help in the next few minutes just in the hallway? I appreciate that, Mrs. Henry. I, I put school board members right to work. Appreciate it. Um, all right, those of you who do not have children in seventh through 12th, if you have children seventh through 12th, we have a few more things to talk about. Everybody else, you are dismissed. Seventh through 12th, just stay around. And Mrs. Coupeian, why don't you go ahead and come up? Uh oh. I have an invader. All right, high school families. I don't think I have any brand new high school families here, do I? Oh, yeah, over here, the Tahir family. There you go. I'm saying that correctly? Tahir? I was at least fairly close. There, thank you. All right, while uh, Mrs. Coupeian is going to come make a couple quick announcements. High school students, you might want to stay in here a minute. Um, if you can, if you can, I understand. Um, Mrs. O'Rourke has for you a tentative, please don't, that a tentative class schedule. And if there are problems or changes, or if you just want to practice going through your day where your classes are going to be, this is an opportunity. If there are any problems with it, come and see me, not necessarily tonight, but you can let me know. The students will also get a copy of this again on Wednesday before we start school next week. Um, but we want as many as possible to have copies. So she's going to uh, hand that out. And Mrs. Coupe is going to talk about a couple of things. <laughs> Go ahead, I'll take this paper. All right. Glad to see you here tonight. Welcome to our new students. We hope that you will have a wonderful year. You will, I think you'll find the teachers and the students will welcome you and you will, in just a very short time, feel a part of LCA here. We're so glad to have you. For the rest of you, uh, I know you guys. That's good to see you too. All right, I do a few different things around here um, at the school and one of the things that I deal with are the uniforms and we have sort of two different sets of uniforms for the high school. We have the regular um, everyday uniforms and these can be um, purchased at lodges down in Albany. I would suggest starting um, in the library first to see if there are any extras there that as Mr. Fry has already said are free and they're in fa fairly good condition, just take those. Um, otherwise, you can purchase them at lodges. My only suggestion is that when you purchase them, get them a little bit larger. Um, especially 
I mean, knowing that your child will continue to grow during the year. I know I've seen some students tonight that look about four to five inches taller, <laughs> and they seem to sprout during the summer, but they do continue to grow during the fall and winter, so get them a little bit larger so it will last them for the entire year. Um, for girls, girls you know, especially for the girls, make sure that the skirt falls below the knee. Um, and that's for, that's for modesty issues when, you know, we are sitting down at our desks. We, we continue to be modest. So girls, if you're returning, check your uniforms and make sure they go below the knee. All right, so we'll take care of that. Um, if you will, our day-to-day -day uniforms are the polo shirts, which have our insignia on it. They're light blue, and you must have that insignia on it. And, or you may wear a white button-down collar shirt. Um, boys wear, the, or the girls have khaki skirts or navy skirts. The boys can wear khaki pants or navy blue pants. Um, the big thing that we have with the boys is they tend to forget their belts a lot. So we'll, we'll remind them of their belts. Um, girls, the, the big issue for the girls seems to be the shoes. Now, in the handbook, it says the shoes should be dress or dress casual. So keep them one solid color, either navy blue, black, or brown. And just for clarification, there wasn't anything in the handbook about it, but we noticed some sort of moccasin-y type shoes last year, and we didn't really say too much about that because there wasn't really anything in the handbook. So we're going to clarify that for this year and just say, let's stay away from the moccasin -y type shoes. We know they're comfortable, but um, we want to stay in line with the handbook. Um, that takes care of your, day, your daily uniform. The other uniform that 7th through 12th graders need are your PE clothes. And what we, you can purchase those right here at the school from Mrs. Kettlewood in the office. And for both your PE clothes and your regular uniform clothes, parents, I would somehow put some identifying mark on it because in the course of the day, especially when they have gym, they're changing clothes. And somehow, I don't quite know how, all the clothes end up on the floor. <laughs> and then when they come back to change back in, they just go, oh, that looks like my shirt, and they pick it up and put it on, and it might feel a little too snug, but they just go home with it anyway and only to find out that it's not somebody's missing one. So if you can um, label their, their clothes, it'll, it'll make it, the parents will appreciate it because it's expensive, you know. Um, so if you could take care of that, we would appreciate that. All right, now I'm gonna switch gears a little bit. I also deal with discipline. Um, and I'm the one who, when I walk down the hall and people, and I look at people, they're, they get nervous. They're going, oh, is my shirt unbuttoned? I said, oh, I forget my belt. Or, and here at Latham, we have a sort of a two-pronged approach to discipline. The first is preventative. Next week when the students come back to school, we will be explaining some of our, we will be explaining our rules, giving them a heads up. This is what's acceptable here at the school. This is what we need you to stay away from. And so we introduce them, you know, at the beginning of the year and all throughout the year, we are working on this preventative, giving them a heads up, letting them know what's acceptable. The other part of our discipline is when they, you know, as teenagers do tend to forget, and so we have to actually take some corrective discipline. And that comes in the form of this little slip. This is called our point slip. Now, if your child comes home with it, don't panic. 90% of the time, all the, the infraction that they have committed is a minor one, like forgetting to wear a belt. After you've been warned a couple of times, then you get a point slip. So don't panic. Um, what we will do, it'll come home with your child. It will tell you what the infraction is for, and most of the time it'll be a one-point infraction, which is not a big thing. Your part that we ask you to do is to sign it. Um, you can keep one copy and then send the other copy back. 
We do tell the student, so it needs to come back the following day. And this way, this keeps you as a parent informed as to what's going on in your child's life. And is there, if there is some behavior that needs a little bit of um, nudging from the parent, that lets you know what's going on. So if you get one of these, don't panic. Just check, read it through. It just takes a moment. Sign it and give it back to your child so they can return it um, the following day to school. And if you have any more questions about this, the point slip, I'll be in the far reaches of the building, way back there in the distance. I'm beyond the library. I'm just into the room past the library. If you go any further, you'll be out in the backyard. So, but that's where I am, if you have any more questions. I'm going to change hats one last time. Um, I'm also the athletic director. And I hope we have some new volleyball players. We have um, our volleyball, girls volleyball will be starting up next week. And we will, our first practice will be on Friday. And so what I need to alert parents to and even returning, if your child is gonna be playing a sport, they need a sports physical every year. And so most of my girls from last year, you will be okay for the moment, but it's gonna come up, it's gonna expire. Um, so make sure that you make the appointments. Everyone's trying to make a sports physical an appointment at this time of the year, and it could take three weeks before you can even get in to, to your regular doctor. So in order so we don't miss any practices, just be aware if your child's playing sports, they need that sports physical. And just one quick reminder on that sports physical, um, the doctor's office will have a form for you. Just make sure they check the box that says sport, they're cleared to play sports. We can't take, it's not, in order for us to allow your child to play sports, somewhere it has to say, my child is cleared to play sports. And then sometimes on some of the, um, um, forms, the physical forms, it doesn't say that. So just, just make sure that it does say that and the doctor checks off that box and your child is good to go. So girls, next um, Friday we will have our first practice at 315. Generally we will practice from 315 to about 430. And, um, and um, for, so for the next into October we'll be playing um, volleyball games with other Christian schools in the area. If you have any more questions about that, I am also in the far distance, in the distance back there. She wants a better classroom, I think. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I like my classroom. I like it. I am not complaining at all. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Coupe. And just a, one thing on um, sports physicals or just physicals in general, let me correct one misconception I hear from parents, at least from CDPHP's background, and that's the, what we use here for our our, our employees here, and I think most other health insurance are like that. There's this concept, oh, we can, you have to wait a year before you have another physical. Some doctor's offices we've heard have said that. Here's, at least from CDPHP, and I think this is true of the others, that they will cover 100% of one physical each benefit year. It doesn't have to be 366 days since the last one. You'd probably know when your benefit year begins and they cover one for free. In most cases, they will still cover, even if you want a second one, you'll just have to pay your primary care physician copay. But they will do a second one. Some doctor's offices will tell you other things. So if you get any static from a doctor's office, call your insurance company. Because you, you're, I think doctor's offices, they're nervous about not getting paid. And so we've heard they've given some misinformation out. We hear that every year around sports physicals because we don't want them to expire. If they expire mid-season, either you know the volleyball or basketball they may have to sit out a week or two of games and practices so it's really a misinformation thing what we've heard so just to be aware of that at least with cdphp i know it's not true and i think with others it is as well that you get one per benefit year even if it's only been 11 months since the last one um, that they cover it and even if they don't cover it it's only a copay it's not like they're not going to cover it at all you got to pay the whole bill you just might have to pay your 25, 35, whatever your copay is uh, that you're at your uh, insurance company. 
Let me talk very quickly, I'm almost done. Uh, just a couple technology related things. This ends up being my hat here, and I just want to go through a couple things about them, and especially for our, our new family to be aware. Um, each student in 7th through 12th grade um, will receive a username and password for our local computers. They can get on that. They also receive a um, school email address and access to our Sycamore online system. I didn't talk much about that earlier, but it's a system whereby you can check the grades of your children. The students can as well where if you have multiple children, you can log in as the parent and see all their grades. The child logs in can only see his own grades. So you don't need to share your password for them to check their homework. Especially if you only have one child, it really doesn't make much of a difference. But if you have several children, they don't need to be looking at their brother's homework or their brother's grades. Let them look at their own. We give that to each student in seventh through 12th grade. Everything they do here at school is logged. You're always welcome to have full access. And if you're nervous about any of those things, please come and talk to me. We want to support you as the parent, but we also are trying to teach both how to use these things and how to use them responsibly as part of what we do. Um, I, I'd like to remind our parents every year, we have very, very simple cell phone policy here. Right, students? Where's one of my students? What are my two rules? I have a senior back here. What are my two rules about cell phones? <laughs> I shouldn't have asked a senior. Uh, <laughs> off and out of sight. If you want your child to bring a cell phone to school, that's your choice as a parent, but during the day here, it has got to be turned off and kept totally out of sight. Um, and that is up to you as a parent if you still want them to bring it, but that's our rule while it's here. Now, with that in mind, though, we have certainly, we have a bit of a pilot project this year. It affects the juniors and seniors more, but some of these classes, they're, they're going to ask or even, maybe even expect students to use some electronic, um, like a, a laptop or a tablet, something like that in class. Not cell phones, because those are often out of sight. Um, but in some other things, and so one of the changes we did make in our handbook was to clarify how that works. And I want to just, I'm not going to spend long on this, but I want to go through just a few policies on how that's going to work. And this is a pilot program this year. If this doesn't work, we'll change it and fix it. But this is what we're going to try to do. It's a bring your own device model. Some schools, we, we were talking about this at in-service with the teachers. There are schools out there now that are requiring you to buy an iPad to send in with your child. There's other schools that increase their tuition by that amount and provide the iPad themselves, plus insurance, plus all the other stuff. As we've thought about it with our school board and administration here, you can make a better decision for your child than we can. If you want your child to have a tablet, you make that choice as a parent. If you want to go into the Android world, get, your, get, get an Android tablet. You want to stay in the Apple world, get them an iPad or an iPad mini or something. Uh, you want to be in the PC world, you know, make that choice. I don't know if BlackBerry's going to come out with a tablet big enough or anything, but you make that choice. Most of what we are going to do here would support any of those things. Um, they must be brought to school, though, for the sole purpose of doing academic work. They're not there for gaming or that kind of thing. We're not going to allow that, and we're going to have kind of a one-strike policy on that. You do that, you're in trouble. You may not even be able to bring the device anymore. And if your textbook's on that, you're really in trouble. Uh, but no, we, we, we don't want to go down that road, but it's not here for that. They must, be, they must not be capable of an independent internet connection. In other words, like an iPad that has a 3G or 4G connection, that's not going to be allowed. Um, many of the ones that you might get a tablet like for free or virtually free from like Verizon or T-Mobile, those are not going to be acceptable here, even if it's disabled. And I think you understand the reason for that. Our, the Wi-Fi that we're providing for the students here is heavily filtered, right students? The, the, it's heavily filtered. Um, it's also logged. So if there's any questions or anything, we can go back. To, to equate the internet with the Wild West is unfair to the Wild West. Okay, it is awful out there. We don't want to open any doors of temptation. So even if it is disabled on the tablet, we're not gonna allow that. It has got to be not even capable of that connection. It has to connect through our school Wi-Fi only to be allowed. Um, it certainly cannot be used to play music, listen to games, social networking, participate in any non-academic use. Um, and the last thing about it is it has to be brought at your own risk. If you're worried about it getting broken, either don't send it or get insurance yourself on it. It's, and by the way, it's a lot cheaper for you to get it than for us to get school policy on it. I've looked into that. For us to like, get a, a policy that would cover everybody's iPad, it's really pricey. And so it's really cheaper in the long run for you to buy it yourself than for us to buy it and then increase our tuition to cover it, our student fee or something like that. Um, so, but it's brought at your own risk. Um, and certainly then, we will, I'll answer this, these questions for students next week. I will approve them um, if there's any questions. Um, let me go through that. 
That's the tablet policies. If you have any questions, see me about that. 11th grade. I only see one 11th grader here. Um, you know this already, but don't forget you are required to have a certain calculator. It's not an option. So if you don't have one already, see Mrs. Hamilton and get figure out what kind it is. All right. Student drivers. Student driver? All right. Uh, is that the only one I have here? Um, so did you, already, did you already do one of the forms? No, I didn't. Okay, so come see me about that. I have form, student driver form. Come and see me for that, and I'll give it to you. Uh, tonight, Mrs. O'Rourke has two fun jobs, I guess. She gets to collect tissues. If you brought tissues in, she is going to collect all of them for the high school, and then when any other room needs them, we like go to, it's like going to the bank. We just go to Mrs. O'Rourke and say, I need a box of tissues. No. You divide them up. Divide them up. And then also is, you probably already know this, if you want to get your locker assignment, pick a locker, see Mrs. O'Rourke tonight, um, and you can get your locker and start learning the combination. And I mentioned earlier, Mrs. Walter will have those white verification forms. Any other questions? Teachers, anything else I should have said that I didn't? I probably said too much. Yeah, okay. Teachers, go ahead and go to your classrooms, and we'll give them about a 30-second head start, then we'll let the rest of us go. I know it's a lot of talking. You all are a blessing to me, and I really appreciate each of our families. All right, now that the teachers are out of here, you're dismissed. I guess I better take these forms and sign them myself. <laughs>